Our verse today is Psalm 72, verse 11. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. Psalm 72 is a royal psalm, a prayer for the prosperity of God's anointed king. The psalmist prays that God would bless the king and the nation. He begins his prayer by asking God to give the king the virtues of justice and righteousness to lead the people well in verses 1 and 2. He prays for the nation's prosperity, justice, and freedom from oppression in verses 3 and 4. He then asks the nation to revere God so righteousness and peace abound in verses 5 and 7. He then prays for military success and that other nations will honor the king with gifts and serve him in verses 8 to 11. Our verse is the concluding part of this section of verses 8 to 11. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. At the time of the composition of this psalm, the psalmist had the Israelite king in mind. But why will all the kings of the earth come to worship the king of Israel? The Israelite king was special and unique because he was a son of God. Therefore, God was the real king of Israel, and the human king only acted on behalf of God. By coming to Jerusalem to pay homage, they were coming to worship the true God of Israel. In other words, the king of Israel only deputized for God, the ideal king. We can understand this concept by reading this verse with other Psalms and prophecies. In Psalm 86 verse 9, we read, All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. Here we see that the reference is to God, not the human king. Also, in Psalm 138 verse 4, we read, All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And the prophet Isaiah says, Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 7. So it is clear that the psalmist has in mind God, the real King of Israel, whom other nations will come and worship in Jerusalem. This psalm then becomes a prophecy fulfilled with a visit of the Orient kings, the magi or wise men, to the newborn child whom they described as the infant king of the Jews. Jesus also sees in himself as the king of the Jews by mounting on a donkey, and Pilate affirmed that he is indeed a king by putting that title on the cross of Jesus at his crucifixion. What do we learn from this verse today? God is the true king, the true leader of any nation if they must make progress. The nation cannot prosper and experience justice and true freedom from oppression with bad leadership. Bad leaders become a reproach to the nation, pervert justice and oppress the people they should protect and govern. They become oppressors rather than liberators of the people they are meant to serve. But when God is the ideal king and the leaders take instructions and follow the direction of God, then all will be well. Lord, rule over our nations as our true king and leader. Amen. God bless you and I wish you a pleasant day.